Hello guys, you're welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Bola. Thank you so much for joining. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back again. I appreciate your loyalty. Today guys, I'll be sharing with you some tips you need to know and take note of in case you are migrating into the United Kingdom um, for the very first time and you plan to settle here. So I want to give you some basic things you need to take note of when you are renting um, an accommodation in the United Kingdom. So if that's uh, something you're interested in or you feel is going to be beneficial to you, please keep watching. In the United Kingdom, there are different types of houses depending on your family size. So if you're coming in as a single person or as a couple or as some um, someone who has children, um, there are different accommodation available for you. There is um, shared accommodation and shared accommodation is just um, a situation whereby there is a building that consists of about four bedroom flats and um, four bedroom, four bedrooms. <laughs> and what, you, what happens is, is each individual has a room to themselves. Then you guys get to share the kitchen and um, the restroom and the lounge. The lounge is also known as the sitting room. That is what a shared accommodation means or what it's like. So it's just basically a situation whereby you get to share kitchen and lounge with other people. Sometimes you could be lucky to have some of the rooms in sealed where you have your toilet and bathroom to yourself. But in other cases, you may also have to share toilet and bathroom with other people as well. So that's it for shared accommodation. Secondly, you have um, a studio apartment. A studio apartment, if you're watching from Nigeria, is what we know as um, self-contained in which you have your kitchen, toilet, bathroom, and um, bedroom all in within the same place. It's just a single room that has um, both kitchen, toilet, and bathroom. So that's another type of accommodation. Then a one-bedroom flat. A one-bedroom flat is just your room and your parlor basically that's what it means with your kitchen toilet and bathroom that's basically what one bedroom flat is. then when it comes to flats there are different um sizes of flats you could get um one bedroom flat you could get two bedroom flat you could get three bedroom flat it's very very rare to have four bedroom flats i've never seen such a thing before but I know there is one to three bedroom flats in the United Kingdom here. They call flat apartment. So an apartment is just basically where you have um, a house among several other houses. So they are usually built in form of estate or in form of um, buildings joined together. So you don't get to have a flat within a compound just on its own. In most cases, a flat is usually a combination of every other flat together and you get to share a compound with every other person who is um, your neighbor, if that makes sense to you. Moving on, you have houses and there are different types of houses. Houses is just like what you know as duplex if you're watching from Nigeria. So you have um, the bathroom, the bedroom, the um, lounge, the dining space, the kitchen. Then you have the garden to yourself. You have a parking slot to yourself. It's just basically like a duplex. Basically, that's what it's like. And um, when it comes to houses, there are different types of houses. You have semi-detached house. I will insert pictures so that you can have an idea of what I'm trying to describe. You have the semi-detached house. You have um, terraced house. You have detached house. Um, different type of houses depending on what exactly you are looking for. Now, you could have um, a house from two bedroom standard. So you could have a two bedroom house where you get to have um, the living room, the dining, the kitchen and two bedrooms upstairs with um, possibly the family bathroom. And um, in most cases, houses in the United Kingdom are very, very small. So you don't get to have a suit in most cases, especially if it is not a home of yourself that you have bought if it is a rented apartment it's very rare for you to find a suit for the master bedroom but it is not impossible okay then you could have three bedroom house you could have four bedroom house depending on what exactly you are looking for and your family size 
now let's talk about the criteria um for taking what type of accommodation in the united kingdom so if you are single you are coming on your own you could decide to you know put up with a shared apartment or you could get a studio um apartment or you could get one bedroom flat which is like a room and parlor depending on what you want your plans and your proposition and depending on the cost of the accommodation in that environment because sometimes you may get a room and a parlor for very very lesser price you could even get two bedroom house as a single person for very lesser price okay while in some other accommodation the same amount some people are paying for a two bedroom house is what you are paying for a shared apartment so it really depends on your location and what exactly you want okay now let's talk about people who are coming in with, with family so if you have a family size your husband yourself and your child if you just have one child you, you could start out with a two bedroom apartment because in the uk there are rules and there are laws that governs accommodation and things like that so you're not expected to share the same room with a child especially if the child is over a year old you are not expected to share the same room with that child the child is expected to have a room of their own so you could um double the child's room as the guest room as well so you could start out with a two-bedroom apartment if you don't mind you can also start out with a two-bedroom house i currently live in a two-bedroom house and i would be showing you the house tour very soon in subsequent videos so you guys should subscribe to the channel so i currently live in a two-bedroom house and i didn't start out with that when i came into the uk which is something i'm going to explain later in the video the the two-bedroom house i'm living in at the moment there is a room for my husband and i and there's a room for our son which also doubles as a guest room so you could do something like that to manage space and if you have the money the reason why i didn't go for something higher is because where i live accommodation is very expensive this place is just like one hour away from london by train so accommodation is expensive if you are getting a three bedroom house there is um, a lot you are going to have to pay in this environment and another thing i need to mention is in the united kingdom before you are given an accommodation you will be asked their salary don't find it embarrassing when somebody asks you how much do you earn per annum the reason they do that is because they want to be sure that once you take out accommodation fee from the salary you have enough left over for your bills for feeding and to take care of yourself so naturally nobody will give you an accommodation if they feel that you are exceeding your budget for that accommodation so for a particular salary range there's an amount you are expected to pay for house rent so let me give you an example let's say for example my salary income for the month is two thousand pounds I am not expected to take any accommodation that is going to exceed £1,000 for the month. So if I have a joint um, financial income with my husband, let's say my husband is earning like um, £2,000 per month as well. So we both could come together, put our finances together and decide to, you know, rent an accommodation that is way higher than £1,000. But if it is just based on my salary, I cannot rent any accommodation that is over £1,000. Because by the time I take off the accommodation fee, then I will have to take off money for bills. Bills sometimes could go as high as £400 in total. And when I say bills, bills consist of your electricity bill, your water bill, your council tax bill, your TV license, your broadband. All of those come together every month to make up the bills you pay so let's say bills is going to like 400 pounds that's a total of 1400 now deduct that from 2000 you have 600 left you don't even have any amount to save because you're going to feed let's say you deduct feeding from that 600 you let's say feeding is an average of 150 pounds that's on the average because currently in the united kingdom things are now very expensive so let's say on the average you spend 150 pounds on feeding how much do you have left do you have left you have like 450 pounds left out of that 450 pounds let's say you spend like um 80 to 100 pounds on transportation 
you have 30 50 pounds left then you want to you look good you want to take care of yourself you want to buy one or two things for yourself you spend like 100 pounds on that you have how much left so you can you consider at the end of the month you may not be able to save any amount which is um negative to what your plans and purpose should be if you're coming into the uk to set so so you really need to put into consideration all of this calculation before you make up your mind and decide on what kind of accommodation you are planning to get in the united kingdom then another point i'm going to mention is whatever you do please start out small start out small in the sense that you could start out with an apartment you don't necessarily have to start out with a house especially if you have a small family size it's understandable that people who have like three kids four kids cannot start out with an apartment because if they are blessed to have kids of different sexes different gender those people cannot share the same room so once your child is like four and above they cannot share the same room with opposite, opposite sex that's the right and normal thing so the female may need a room to themselves and the male children may need a room to, the, to themselves then the parents will need another room to, to themselves so that's like a three bedroom to start out depending okay depending on your family size like i said so you need to put all of that into consideration so if you are getting a three bedroom house in an environment like this then it means that you have to be working your partner has to be working so that your joint income can um, cover whatever needs to be paid for so you could start as one by starting from an apartment not not necessarily a house start with an apartment especially in the case if you are coming as a nurse and you know that you are coming in first you are the one who is getting the salary first before your husband comes to join you to you know do the job search and start any money just as you do start with an apartment and once you feel settled enough you know you can now progress to getting a house for yourself and your family um, another thing i'm going to mention is be very very careful when looking out for accommodation because it is important for you to consider the contract okay so if possible i'm going to advise that you start out with a six month contract for an accommodation so that means that after six months you can decide that you want to move out of that house and get something better when i came into the uk i signed up for a six month contract accommodation immediately the six month contract was expired i moved out and then um, changed accommodation and moved into a new place that i felt more comfortable in with my family size okay so you have to also consider that when you're signing accommodation contract make sure that it is a flexible one that can give you a minimum at least on the barest minimum six months to decide whether you want to renew or not when it comes to the accommodation contract okay then another thing to consider when you're taking out is the um council tax band when i say council tax band there are different bands for council tax you have council tax a council tax b council tax c council tax d and council tax e so i'm going to insert um a definition of what that means in the video so that you can have an idea so it just means that the amount of money that is requested for you to pay so that your garbages will be disposed your um, road will be repaired just the amount that the, uh, that the government spend on taking care of the environment so whatever you do make sure that you try not to exceed council tax c because the higher you go the more expensive it becomes and that means that if you are on council tax a you are on the barest minimum which is like the most affordable band of council tax if you are on council tax b you are on the next barest minimum council tax b tax c is more expensive council tax d is way expensive i am currently on council tax c and i pay about 168 pounds every month as my council tax bill okay people who are on council tax d they pay as high as 180 something to 200 for their tax rate depending on the location as well so you want to look out and be very very careful 
about another that. thing is the energy consumption so when you are renting house in the uk i i would suggest that you look for house that are um very very low in their energy consumption so you see energy rating a energy rating b energy rating c energy rating d e f g blah 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 so the best is from a just like council tax okay when you start seeing energy rating d e f g those ones are the ones that need improvement and they may start giving you problem so you want to avoid things like that then when you are also renting house make sure that whatever house you are renting especially if you are coming during this period into the united kingdom it could be very very tricky for you to discover whether the house is going to be a good idea during winter period there's something in the united kingdom they called double glazed central eating so what that means is the windows are made in a way that uh, it has double layers so those double layers are what you need during winter to promote insulation of it if you are taking a house that is not double glazed windows it's going to be very very difficult for you you will be freezing during winter okay but if it's double glazed you can still do with minimal um amount of eater within your house and when i say central eating it's just like there is a central switch that can you know provide eating supply to the old house so once you turn on the switch it comes on and the old house warms up and if you are not able to get something like that you could also look out for electricity eating as well so those are the um, type of eating in the uk and this consumes a lot of money because it consumes a lot of energy okay but for me i prefer gas central eating and double glazed windows it just makes your life easy during winter period because winter can be very very crazy it could be extremely cold like freezing cold and you want to watch out and be careful about that all right and another thing you want to consider when you are renting an apartment is you want to be very very careful who you are dealing with the kind of agent you are dealing with so once you see a house that interests you the name of the agent is usually on those houses i'm going to give you a list of um, applications that you can use to search for houses in the uk so once you see the name of the agent please go online and google and read reviews about the agent because some agents are very very annoying they can frustrate your life they can make life difficult for you in the uk they can make you pay for things that you never emphasize or opt for it's happened to us i am speaking from experience so go online google check the name of the agent find out about them what kind of people are they have them been good to their previous tenants ask around about them before you decide to sign up your contract with them it's going to help you a whole lot like my friend also fell victim for an agent her house fell down the agent was delaying a lot she had to find a way to reach out to the landlord and the landlord was able to come quickly and make things happen meanwhile the agent was delaying trying to do whatever it is i don't understand so you want to be very very careful when it comes to agents so i'm going to personally say you should try to get out directly from the landlord and some applications that can help you with this is zoopla um open rent your move they can help you to have direct contact with the landlord to you know make inquiries and get a proper accommodation with the landlord so you can have a direct dealing with the landlord and ask your questions whatever it is, it is that worries you and even if while living in the house something happens or something come up it will be easy for you to relate it to the landlord and the landlord can decide to take responsibility for whatever it is they want to do about the situation without wasting too much if you're coming into the united kingdom and you know that you can't drive or you don't have plans to drive anytime soon try to find houses that are close to major areas like the bus station if you have children houses that are close to the school environment because mobility in the uk can be very very funny it's not like um back at home where you could take a taxi or take a bus and tell the bus i want to stop here no contrarily there is a bus stop for everywhere you're going to so make sure that your house is quite close to the bus stop it's not so far from the bus stop it's also close to your children's school just in case something comes up there's an emergency and you need to quickly do something by rushing that requires you to rush 
down to their school from the house you can do that within a couple of minutes and not feel pressured by anything as well those are the things you need to consider when you're renting an apartment in the united kingdom if there's another thing i've not mentioned guys i'll film another video for it this video is already getting too long and i don't want to bore you with a lot then i have gist for you guys our personal experience with accommodation in the uk our very first accommodation our personal experience with it i have gist for you it should be coming up after this video hopefully and i'll be giving you a store of our first apartment in the uk and our current house right now so all of those are coming your way if that's something you would like to see subscribe to the channel hit the notification button so that you don't miss out when those videos are uploaded click the like button if you feel that i have said one or two things that has helped you so far and if you have family and friends around please don't forget to share with them it could be beneficial thank you so much guys for watching again and again <laughs> i'll see you in my next video till then stay safe and stay blessed bye